Is the South Africa 2023 Rugby World Cup winning team the greatest of all time? Have we just watched the GOATs? Because Eben Etzebeth thinks so. Against the odds, we will drop it in. So, you guys are special. You will go down as the greatest rugby team in the history of rugby. Yes, please. And I'm going to make the argument that Eben Etzebeth is absolutely right. And not because Eben Etzebeth said so, by the way. Although, if he pinned me up against the wall, I'd say whatever he asked me to, because he's frightening. But no, that's not the reason. And it wasn't because the thought did pop into my head on Saturday night when I was there in Paris watching the Rugby World Cup final. No, what really made me think this and why I'm making this video is because of this. World Rugby's Dream Team, which featured, as you may have seen when it was announced at the World Rugby Awards the other night, features five Irishmen, uh, five Frenchmen, four New Zealanders and Eben Etzebeth, the sole South African in the Dream Team. And that got me thinking... Maybe this team are the greatest of all time. Or sorry, what I should say is maybe this is the greatest team of all time. Underlining that word twice. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. And uh, you can really help the channel grow by giving the video a thumbs up. I would love to know what you think. Who do you think is the greatest team of all time? Am I wrong? Have I got this one right? Who else do you think that, that accolade should belong to? And if I haven't already, I hope by the end of this video... I will earn your subscription. I'm, I'm anticipating that there will be a lot of suggestions that the New Zealand team of 2015 might be the GOATs. I think that's a fair shout. They were imperious in the couple of years building up to that World Cup when they won their back-to-back -back titles. Uh, and when you look at the actual route to the final, they, they it was a procession through the pools. They put 60 points on France in the quarterfinals, snuck past South Africa and then dominated Australia in the final, 34 points to 17. When you look at the legends that bowed out in that game, the likes of Conrad Smith and Ma Nonu and Richie McCaw and Dan Carter, some of the greats, but the rest of their team wasn't too shabby either. Maybe the best back row we've ever seen in international rugby. Jerome Kano, Richie McCaw, Kieran Reid in that side, Sam Whitelock and Brody Retallick in the second row, Aaron Smith at scrum half. Um, Bowden Barrett and Sonny Bill Williams were on the bench in that team. Fantastic rugby side. So maybe, yeah, maybe they are the greats. Um, I'm going to argue they're not, and I'll come on to why. The England 03 side dominated the Southern Hemisphere teams in the year before and then went down under and became the first Northern Hemisphere team ever to win the World Cup and made legends out of Johnny Wilkinson and Martin Johnson and Lawrence Delalio and Neil Back, Jason Robinson. The names just, just reel off the tongue, don't they? Uh, legends that they are. Also, another contender might be the team of the late 80s for New Zealand won the first World Cup and then were just dominant. Wayne Shelford uh, at the four, they just had heat that no team could cope with. So maybe they would shout. I don't remember those myself, but I know enough about them retrospectively to know they deserve a massive amount of respect. But no, I'm going to say this team, this is the GOATs right here. We've just watched them. And that's even when I acknowledge that you could argue that the team that won the World Cup four years ago, South Africa, had more talent. Just put the two teams together, South Africa in 2019, South Africa, South Africa of this year. And I think you might take a number of players then over the players now. You'd take Dwayne Vermeulen, age 33, winning a man of the match in a World Cup final rather than 37-year-old Dwayne Vermeulen. You'd take Malcolm Marks over Dion Ferry. You'd take Lacanio Am over Jesse Creel. Not a criticism of Creel at all. He was fantastic, but it's how good Am was then. You'd... I don't know, you might take Tendai and Tamawira the Beast over Stephen Kitsoff, perhaps. A lot of the players are the same, but Vili LaRue then versus Vili LaRue now? I know which I'd have. You'd probably have LaRue then over Damian Willemser as well. So am I making an argument for the 2019 team being the greatest ever? No. No, I'm not. Because 2019, and this is something that, that links with the 2015 New Zealand team as well. They had a dominant run to the win in 2015. South Africa four years ago had a relatively easy run to a World Cup. They lost to New Zealand in the pool stages, but then they had Japan in the quarterfinals, Wales in the semifinals, and England in the final. It's never easy winning a World Cup. Every World Cup winner deserves massive respect, but that's on the easier end of things. Certainly when you compare it to this year, the hardest route that any team has ever taken to World Cup glory, seven brutal games, which included, as well as Tonga, which is no slouches in the pool stages, the world number one team in your pool and the world number five team. Maybe the best Irish team there's ever been. 
a narrow defeat as South Africa tried some things out, but the physical toll that that game would have taken and been in the legs for the rest of the tournament. And then it was only followed up by maybe the best French team there's ever been and managing to come through that quarter-final victory against the hosts and put them out. A semi-final where they faced an England side that managed to raise themselves for their easily their best performance in four years, which in England are capable to do. And then that final against New Zealand. And it's not just the results that South Africa have got, which are remarkable in themselves, particularly backing it up week on week on week as they have had to do, and by narrow margins, whether they play well or whether they have an off day. It's the choices that South Africa have made that no other team in the world would make. What other top international team would have selected Dion Ferry in their squad? It's not happening. It just wouldn't have happened. When, when there was injuries to the hooker position and Dion Ferry and Marco van Staden are your backup hookers, what other team would have selected Andre Pollard and, and trusted in, in a 37-year-old who isn't really a hooker? or well, certainly hasn't been for a long, 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 long time. What other team has taken the, the risks and shown the innovation that, that South Africa have done with their 7-1 split on the bench, whether or not people got upset by it or, or liked it? They have innovated, they've been creative. They've also redefined what it means to be, on the, to be a replacement. Traditionally, when you look at replacements in rugby, you've always thought that if you're on the bench, you're the second best in that position. Not the case when you look at South Africa. They have pioneered using particular people for particular roles against particular opponents. Look no further than the way South Africa have used Quagga Smith, who has a role specific for that group and for that team to do a very particular job. And he has done it better than anybody and has been a massive part of why they have won. When you think back to the semi-final, taking off your fly half 30 minutes into a game and it's not just the decision to take the fly half off 30 minutes into a game, which proved a masterstroke in the overall picture of the game and the way they used the, the, the props coming off the bench. But it's the fact that Marnie Libok never complained once. Marnie Libok was then not selected in, in, in a World Cup final. And how many other countries would that have caused some kind of rift, some kind of... Um, clique to appear or some some word to come out in the media that they'd been uh, someone was unhappy or disgruntled or felt slighted never happens with this South Africa team and I was speaking with uh, Ben Kay who said that he heard from the, the the people that run the hotel in was it Toulon yeah the hotel in Toulon that South Africa had as their base and they they said that that is a hotel where they see a lot of international teams come through, a lot of from a lot of different sports. And this South Africa side is the tightest group they've ever seen. And it's clear that they had something very, very special. The families were all in, kids were running around. It's um it's something quite special that they've managed to create. And that sense of unity as a squad, that it is a 33-man effort and even the way the, the pictures you saw of Mapimpi and Malcolm Marks coming back into the squad, that just doesn't happen just like that. That is something very rare and very special. And it's why, it's one of the reasons why they're able to do the things on the field that we've seen as a team, as a, as a collective. They are better than the sum of their parts because they're maybe the best coach team we've ever seen. That the, the scrum called from a mark inspirational simple when Rassi Erasmus explained it but inspirational France took away one of their big weapons by not kicking out so they couldn't use their set piece there weren't many scrums so they engineered a way to be able to leverage one of their strengths amazing thinking this coaching team have created an environment and done th and tried things which nobody else would have done and it's why they have, I think, overachieved. They are better than the sum of their parts. That said, when you look at the names on the team sheet of the 2023 South Africa side, you see people that are icons. Peter Steph de Toy, Eben Etzebeth, Hondre Pollard, Cheslin Colby. These are people we're going to talk about many, many years from now. Sia Khaleesi, maybe the greatest captain we've ever seen. 
People talk about Willie John McBride. They talk about Richie McCaw and Martin Johnson. This might be the greatest leader we've ever seen. And uh, there are South African fans that I've spoken to over the last couple of months in France who've said, we want to see a Khaleesi as our president. And they're kind of saying it in a kind of jokey fashion, but I think they also might mean it. And I wouldn't put it beyond the realms of possibility. That is how impressive a human being and a focal point Sia Khaleesi is the way he speaks. And that's what's so incredible about this South Africa team. They transcend rugby, goes beyond rugby. And I'll get onto more of that in a minute. But I wanted to have a look at the team sheets for that, that 2015 New Zealand team uh, that, that won the World Cup then, who many have considered and possibly still considered to be the greatest. And the team sheet is ridiculous. 1-23. to 23. The South Africa team from the weekend just gone is incredible. 1-23. to 23. I've already referenced this very much a 33-man squad. But one thing I've been doing through the tournament and I do generally on the channel is I do combine teams in the build-up to matches. This is a bit of a hypothetical just for a bit of fun, I did a combined team of the 2015 New Zealand side and the South Africa team from 2023. And you can see how paper thin the gap between the sides is. I've edged towards South Africa's front five, both in the starting team and on the bench. And I've edged towards South Africa's back line uh, and back row in the rest of the side. It's, I mean, my goodness me, they're two incredible rugby teams. I, wouldn't you love to see this matchup? That you wish in some fantasy parallel universe we could make this game happen. It would be fascinating to know. The only areas I actually found a little bit tricky was leaving Jerome Kano out of a team. That's that's how good this combined team is and putting in Peter Steff to toy. And also on the wings, it was Nehe Milner Scudder and Julian Savia. And I've edged for the South African wing. As I think in Kurt Lee Arendt, so we're seeing one of the greats unfold in real time. He's just been incredible. That try saving tackle uh, to stop Rico Iwani is um, was just world class and that's not something he's necessarily known for he's known mainly for being a ridiculous finisher so there's not a lot between those two teams I, I gather that but again let me make one final argument that South Africa 2023 are the GOATs in 1970 and look I, I may well have some details on this wrong because I'm only learning about it as I speak to South Africans through the World Cup that I've just been at in France and through just things that I've read. But in 1970, the British and Irish Lions controversially toured South Africa. No supporters travelled, and there was a lot of criticism for the British and Irish Lion players who chose to go on that tour in 1970 during apartheid. And during a period when the, the Springbok jersey, what it represented was division in South Africa. Rugby was the white sport and to the point that at the stadiums during the matches there was a there was a black section and they were cheering for the British and Irish Lions who would go over to them and celebrate with them when they scored tries to acknowledge the support because they had no support of their own. And now that, in 1970, there was a lot of people that would have been, would have been watching the game on Saturday night and that was in, within their lifetime. Within their lifetime, they have gone seen South Africa and the rugby team go from that to now what the Springbok jersey represents is it's a symbol for the kind of South Africa that many, many millions of people want and are striving for. And chills down my spine as I even say those words. That is how powerful this South Africa team is and has become. And that's not by accident. That is the responsibility and that is one of the motivations which has driven them to achieve greatness. And so if you find it hard to choose between New Zealand 2015 or any other team and South Africa 2023, let that be the element that swings it just in this team's favour because on and off the field, they are something very, very special. I'd love to know your comments. Get stuck in. Love it if you'd give the video a thumbs up and share the video. And I would love to have your subscription. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers and I'll see you on the next one.